Well, there is one part of lawn care that I have to deal with every single year and I hate doing it. And that is dealing with weeds in the lawn. Yo, hey guys, what's going on? It's Kyle, the Lawn Mentor here. And today is a day that I have been dreading. It is the day that we are going to deal with the weeds in my lawn. So by the time you see this video, you probably will have seen me already deal with fungus in the lawn. And on top of that, one of the other hardships or nuisances really that I'm dealing with in my lawn is weeds. And I'm talking about both broadleaf weeds and grassy weeds this year. Last year I was struggling with grassy weeds, uh, but it seems like it's gotten worse this year. We are going to talk about how to treat broad leaf weeds in the lawn. And I'm talking dandelion, I'm talking wild violet, I'm talking chickweed. I have seen those all over my lawn. You probably have noticed some in yours. So let's go in the garage, let's talk about what we're gonna do about this and how we can get rid of these weeds. Today we're going to talk about weeds because that's what I'm dealing with. When it comes to the weeds in my lawn, what I'm noticing is I basically have two types of weeds. The first type is a grassy type weed and the second type is a broadleaf type weed. Now most of the weeds that us homeowners will find in our lawns I believe will fall into these two categories. Dandelion, chickweed, creeping charlie, ground ivy. Those are all kinds of broad leaf weeds. Now some of the harder to control weeds that you might have to deal with in your lawn like I am are grassy type weeds. So in my lawn I'm dealing with orchard grass, possibly quack grass. It's been hard for me to identify but nonetheless when it comes to broad leaf weeds like dandelion there's a lot of products available at your big box store that you can buy right off the shelf that are supposed to help those weeds to go away. Essentially what you have is a liquid that you spray on the leaves of the weed and it kills the weed. Now there's basically two kinds of these liquids which you can buy that will do the job and those are called selective herbicides and non-selective herbicides. Selective herbicides are herbicides that are specifically formulated to kill a select type of plant. So when you go to the store and you buy some kind of weed killer that says Roundup for lawns or it might say doesn't kill grass, what you're actually purchasing is a selective herbicide. It's an herbicide that is specifically formulated to kill the weeds in your lawn but not the turf grass that you might have in your lawn. Non-selective herbicides are herbicides which basically just kill whatever vegetation is in its path. A lot of people find the brand name Roundup synonymous with a non-selective herbicide, though Roundup does manufacture selective herbicides for your lawn. Now that's not to say that the herbicide that you apply to your lawn won't cause some stress to the turf grass because it will. Usually the labels of these will have some recommendations on when to apply and what kinds of weather conditions uh, around seeding time or not. So for these grassy weeds that I have, I've been trying to research and find some selective herbicides that I can possibly spray on them to kill the grassy weeds and leave my turf grass alone but it doesn't look like there are many on the market. At this point, I think what I'm better off doing because of the size of the patches is to use a product like glyphosate that is a non-selective herbicide. And when it comes to the fall time, when we do our overseeding, I'm just gonna kill off those sections of the lawn and reseed them with uh, my seed of choice. For the other weeds which I have in my lawn that I talked about earlier, there are selective herbicides on the market which I have had some luck with and have experience with that I dealt with last year. I'll show you what I use. Last year I picked up this kind of all-purpose weed killer 
and I did see success with it in killing some of the dandelion in my yard. But I was dealing with clover and I was de dealing with wild violet, which were two things that for some reason this weed killer did not take care of. So let's talk about why. What I've had good luck with is this Ortho Weed Be Gone product. So this is specifically something that I picked up after I went to a big box store and tried a product like this. So this is really just a general, uh, it's advertised as a season long weed control for lawns. Kills and prevents weeds for up to six months. Just like with everything else in lawn care, reading the label of products that you apply is important to making sure that you get the results that you want. When it comes to herbicides, this is especially important because over application or improper application of this not only hurts the efficacy of the product, but can actually harm your turf grass. So I went ahead and picked up this uh, Bio Advanced Season Long Weed Control last year in an effort to try to combat the weeds that I was dealing with. As you can see, you know, marketing plays a big role uh, with these companies in how they decide to put these on the shelf. And right away, you see this picture of dandelion. Using this product and not really having success uh, with the clover and the wild violet in my lawn, was honestly part of the reason why I don't in general like to use products that advertise to be a cure-all or you know treats every weed in the book or has every single nutrient in it that your whole lawn could need. The other thing you'll notice about this uh, label is that it says it won't harm lawns. So when you go to your big box store Whenever you're trying to buy an herbicide, make sure that you buy something that specifically calls out that it will not harm your lawn. Otherwise, you might be buying something that has a uh, non-selective herbicide in it and it probably will harm your lawn. The active ingredients in this are 2,4-D, dicamba, MCPP, and isozabin. I don't know how you say that, but anyways. So this is basically... Uh, a combo of a couple different herbicides. And I can expect that would be the reason why they say that it's season-long weed control and it takes care of a variety of weeds because it has multiple herbicides in it. So just like how we do soil tests on our lawn to figure out exactly the kind of ingredients that we need to put into our soil to make sure that we have healthy lawns, we need to pair up the herbicide with the kind of weed that we're trying to treat. Some weeds in the lawn are more easily remedied by specific herbicides than others. So if you can do some research ahead of time to identify the weeds that you have in your lawn, and then do some research to find out what kind of herbicides or active ingredients are best for killing those, you'll be in better shape. I did not try to do that last year and instead tried to see what this kind of, you know, cures a little bit of everything weed killer would do. And I'm not saying it didn't work at all. It did work. I mean, it helped kill the dandelion in my yard for sure. But some of the more difficult weeds like the wild violet that I was dealing with were not going away after one or even two applications of this product. So that's why I went ahead and picked up this product. Actually, this was recommended by Ryan Knorr for dealing with uh, clover and dealing with wild violet. So the active ingredient in this product is triclopyr. So if I put these two side by side, you'll see that the one on the right has an active ingredient of triclopyr, and the one on the left has different ingredients in it. You don't see triclopyr at all on that label. So what does that mean? Well, this has different herbicides in it, different active ingredients, and the reason why I have both of these is because they kill certain weeds better than the other. Right on the label here, you'll see chickweed, clover, and oxalis killer, but that's what's advertised for this product to be good at killing. Same thing with this one. Does that mean that 2,4-D and dicamba are not going to work on any other weeds than dandelion? No, that's not what this means. If you turn this over, you'll actually see uh, instructions here on how to apply, and you'll see a giant list of all of the different weeds that this is supposed to kill. Chickweed and clover are featured here. In fact, many different kinds of clover and creeping charlie are on this list. One thing you do not see on here though is wild violet. So this one should work for the clover that I have in my yard. 
and it should work for the dandelions that I have in my yard. However, it will not work for the wild violet that I have in my yard. This one also has a label on the back, and if we go ahead and peel it open here, here we go, weeds controlled. So again, you see clover, dandelion, chickweed, ground ivy, and wild violet right there at the end. So I ended up using this herbicide to treat the weeds in my lawn instead of this kind of season long one. And I had better results with it. And I think that's because the weeds that I have in my lawn just reacted in a more negative way to triclopyr, the active ingredient, versus 2,4-D and dicamba combo on this one. So all that explaining just to really say, make sure that you properly identify the weed that you're dealing with and make sure that when you go to the store and you pick up one of these products, do some research online to find out what kind of experience people have had with different herbicides, different active ingredients, and if they've been any good at killing what you're dealing with in your lawn. So today we are gonna be going with the Ortho Weed Be Gone, which has an active ingredient of triclopyr in it to take care of all the weeds in the lawn. So how do you apply it? I swear I'm not sponsored by Ryobi. My preferred method of applying an herbicide is to spot spray these. So what that means is instead of mixing up a solution of herbicide and water and spraying your whole entire lawn, which some people would call blanket spraying, we only want to target the spots where there are weeds. I picked up this one gallon Ryobi battery powered sprayer and I've dedicated this sprayer to be used for any of my insecticides or pesticide or herbicide applications. No fertilizers, no biostimulants go through this sprayer. And if you're wondering what I think about it, it's just okay. It gets the job done. So as with most things that we deal with in lawn care, as I said, the label is law. So let's go ahead and take a look at the label to get an idea of some application rates. How much to use is the main piece of information that I'm interested at in at this very moment because it will tell me the rate so here it says one fluid ounce for 200 square feet in general we usually use a full gallon of solution to cover a thousand square feet and when it comes to spot spraying weeds it can be really difficult to estimate the amount of area that you need to cover because you're only going to a small area applying a squirt and walking to a next area and applying a squirt I'll mix up a gallon and use that at the correct rate across the area of the lawn. So one fluid ounce for 200 square feet means that I need five fluid ounces for a thousand square feet, which should be equivalent to a gallon of solution. If you read the rest of this label, it talks about precautions you should take wearing the proper PPE. It does say to avoid mowing one to two days after application. Each weed killer that you buy will have its own unique set of instructions, so make sure that you read the label to understand yours. And I am wearing long pants and I will be wearing boots and gloves to make sure that when I'm applying this, I don't get this on myself. So we have our application rate. We're gonna go with five ounces of product for this entire can. And that should cover 1,000 square feet. And I sure hope I don't have more than 1,000 square feet of weeds in my lawn. So if you haven't checked out my video yet on how to spray with a backpack sprayer, make sure you check that video out. It'll give you a better idea on how to apply liquids out of uh, tool like this. And if you have any questions specifically related to applying weed killers, go ahead and leave me something in the comments and I'd love to start a conversation with you. One of the other things that I advise you do when making a solution like this and spot spraying weeds in the yard is using some kind of marker dye. So this is a blue marker dye that is called laser. Blade. Laser. Blazer. And basically what this is, is a highly concentrated blue dye that you can mix in with the water and weed killer in your tank that will dye the whole solution blue. 
And so this will help you as you walk through the yard and spray different weeds, keep track of which weeds you've already sprayed and which ones you haven't to make sure that as you're walking back and forth, you don't double spray or forget to spray some weeds. A dab will do you when it comes to this and this stuff does dye clothes and skin. Make sure that you are wearing PPE when you're even mixing up this solution. Aside from the weed killer, the blue dye will get you too. So make sure you're wearing some clothes that you don't mind getting dirty. So altogether, what we're going to do is create a solution in our tank that is comprised of water, the blue dye, and the weed killer. And all of that needs to total one gallon. Oh, and I almost forgot. If you want your lawn to be extra squeaky clean. No, I'm just kidding. Dawn dish soap is actually something that you can also spike your herbicide mixture with and it kind of serves as a little bit of a surfactant. A surfactant is a liquid that you put in with your mixture to help the weed killer, the whole solution, coat the leaves evenly and stick to the leaves. When you spray this on the weed, it might all fall off the leaves and go into the surrounding grass and not get on the weed to kill the weed. So adding a little bit of Dawn dish soap to your solution can actually serve as a surfactant or you can go ahead and buy a surfactant to help make sure that this solution is going to stick to that weed and kill it. So all in all, we got four ingredients. We've got water, we've got Dawn dish soap as a surfactant, and we've got our weed killer, and then we've got some blue dye. And so we need to make sure that all of that mixes up to one gallon. So I'm not going to bore you with how to measure that out. I think I've done that in a lot of my other videos. I'm just gonna go ahead and mix up the solution, then we'll get to spray. So at this point, I have a solution created with water, my five ounces of weed killer, and my couple splashes of blue dye. Put the Dawn dish soap in last, if that's what you're using as your surfactant. A tablespoon or so will do just fine for your gallon of solution, and that'll make sure that you don't have a bunch of extra suds everywhere. And then once you get your sprayer all set up, you can agitate the whole thing and get that mixed together. All right, so we've got our weed killer herbicide mixture mixed up, and now all that's left is to apply it to the lawn. So when it comes to spot spraying and you have a hand can, you can just carry your hand can around with your PPE on and just spot spray to coat the weeds that you have in the lawn and walk back and forth in a grid pattern. Make sure you got them all covered and then you're done. So let's go check out how to spray this stuff. So right here, we've actually got a twofer. We've got some wild violet that's sticking out and we also have some dandelions here. So basically you'll take the tip of your sprayer and put it over the weed and do a little Harry Potter Wingardium Leviosa over it and make a weedo go away -o. That's pretty much all there is to it. Just walk through your yard back and forth. You wanna make sure you're not doing it on a very windy day where this is gonna get carried everywhere. And make sure you keep that nozzle pretty close to where the weeds are at so your herbicide's not going everywhere. Walk your yard in a grid and spray these weeds.
All right, so I ran out, which is disappointing. But anyways, I'm gonna have to go mix up a second batch of this. I'll get out here and spray it and then we'll wrap it up. So that's it guys. I hate doing this every year. I'll leave links down in the description below for some of the products that I used today. So if you're interested in getting them, check it out. Leave some comments for me. Hit that thumbs up button. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And thank you if you have. And I'll see you next time.